Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A God Shift. I'm your host, Shana Rattler. I'm so thrilled that you're here today, but before we get started, I would love if you would do me a favor. Like, how is that? I'm, I'm going to ask you for something before I give you anything, but yes, I am. What I want you to do is I want you to take a screenshot. Wherever you're listening to this episode, take a screenshot. With that screenshot, I want you to post it on your social media tag us here at a God shift. And then I just want to hear your biggest aha moment or your biggest takeaway from this episode. And the reason why I do that is because I recognize that there are a lot of believers out there that really want to do their part in order to uphold Christian values, but everybody doesn't know where to start. And so the more times these episodes are shared, the more people can be equipped with the, with the strategies and the techniques and the tools that we share on each of these episodes. So I appreciate you in advance for being willing to share. I'm gonna read my guest's bio and then we are going to get started into what I know is going to be a great conversation. So my guest today is a speaker and the author of four books, including The Christian Voter, How to Vote For, Not Against Your Values to Transform Culture and Politics, The Deep State, 15 Surprising Dangers You Should Know, 23 Equity, or I'm sorry, 23 Equity Crowdfunding Secrets to Raise Capital, and the new multi-channel Integrated Marketing, 29 Trends to Create a Multi-Channel Integrated Campaign to Boost Your Profits Now. He is the publisher of one of the largest evangelical newsletters, Reality Alert, and has appeared on Fox News, Fox Business, CBN, Dove, Newsmax, C-SPAN, and others multiple times. He also owns the 104-time winning ad agency, CDMG, which utilizes the same advanced marketing techniques used by radical socialists. He is one of the top digital and direct response marketers in the United States and teaches how the Republicans conservatives and Christians are 10 years behind in marketing. That could not be further than truth. Anyway, I am glad to welcome to the show, Craig Huey. Hey, Shannon, it's been really good to be with you. I'm excited about uh, this this time together. And uh, yeah, I, I have a marketing background and I kind of do the, the intersection of faith and politics with a blend of marketing perspective. I love it. So I was in, at the time of this recording, it's the end of April. Yes. And Craig, I was in California at a conference at the beginning of the month. And mm -hmm. I heard something that was very startling that I hope you're going to tell me was false. Okay. So the conference organizer mentioned that in the state of California, and I don't know if they were evangelical Christian data or if it was just Christian data, right. but he shared with me that in the state of California, that only 50% of the Christians were registered to vote and that only 50% of those that were registered to vote actually voted. And so when he gave me the number of number one, the number of Christians that are in California and number two, the number of votes that Governor Newsom had when he won the election, if the Christians would have voted, they probably would not have a woke governor that is doing so many egregious things. So is that accurate number one and is is california an anomaly or is this kind of the state of christian and evangelical christian voting across the country that's a great question it's also a shocking question to to a lot of your viewers because here's the thing you would think that christians people who, who are born again who have a christian worldview would want to vote their values yeah here's what we do know that christians will vote Probably 86% of the time, 86% of the time, conservative. They vote their values, and, and they've got certain non-negotiables that involve uh, life. It involves protection of Israel. It involves uh, protecting Christian rights. You know, some key issues uh, that, that are there. And yet, in any church you're going to have 20 to 40% of the people in that church who are not registered to vote. Yeah. And you might say, oh, no, I know everybody in the church. They're registered to vote. Or even a pastor say, I know my church well. And yet, the, the reality is, if I take that membership of the attendees and I match it against a voter file, they're not registered to vote. 
But here's the other shocking part. If you have uh, a Christian who is registered to vote, you can probably count of only maybe 60% of them going to this election in November. Wow. 40% are going to sit it out. Some will have the intention of mailing in their ballot or going to the poll, and they just have life getting in the way. Some just will think, well, you know what? The world's a mess. Rapture's coming. I'm not going to vote. Others will say, oh, I don't think my vote counts or there's too much voter fraud. Or They'll come up with a reason not to vote. And some, they'll put it in the back of their car, their ballot, and uh, tend to go, and they forget. Life gets in the way. So the problem is Christians are not voting. And if they did so, I got to tell you, we could change the local election, the county election, the state election, and even the national election. Yeah. It's the Christians who are not voting. There are, we look at the chaos around us. We look at the erosion of our Christian rights. We look at the war on Christianity and we complain about it, but it's the body of Christ that's not saying enough is enough. We're going to make a positive change. And I love that you say that because oftentimes as Christians, we can also do the lazy thing by just yes. defaulting to prayer. That's and I'm right. not saying that because I think that prayer is not powerful, right. but I think that prayer combined with some strategic actions is even yes. more powerful. So in the city of Memphis, Memphis has a very high crime rate. Right. And they just had a large shooting over the weekend. And I saw somebody post on Facebook and it said, praying isn't working. And it's like, no, prayer in and of itself is not working. There's some actions that needed to be taken. Yes. And half the time, the people that were voting into office are putting policies in place that make it a lot easier for all of this egregious stuff to actually happen. And so I'm just really cur curious because obviously you touched on this a little bit. For those of us that value fundamental Christian values, and right. we don't want to continue to see them eroded, and right. we don't want to, you know, this country was founded on biblical values. Yes. And so with that being said, I believe that, you know, the election coming up this fall in 2024 is going to be very key. So yes. do evangelical Christians, do they hold the key to the 2024 elections? They're like the secret weapon right. of turning America around. Uh, you know, definitely we need to have prayer. We need to have churches praying and individuals praying. We need to have repentance. We need to have revival. All these things are a given, but we also have to have action. Yeah. And, and the fact is, when you're talking about the number of Christians voting 86% conservative, we can change our nation if we got our friends and neighbors and family and Christians out to vote. Let me give you a couple of quick examples. In, uh, in every state, you have a different percentage. You talked about California. In California, the percentage of, uh, of born-again Christians is, is really low. It's probably about 9%. Okay. Uh, in in uh, South Carolina, it's 35%. In, in, in New Hampshire, there's 13% who say that they're born again. But in Iowa, there's 28%. So it's, each state is different. Yeah. But even if you took a state like California or New Hampshire, you could turn it around. Yeah. If you just had 10% more of the Christians registering the vote and voted, you'd change the election. If you had about 15% to 20% of those who are registered to vote but aren't going to go to the poll... If you were able to get them to the poll, you would change the whole community. Yeah. Let me give you an example of Calvary Chapel. That, let's go to California. Uh, probably one of the hardest states there is uh, in California. There's Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills with Pastor Jack Hibbs. Well, Pastor Jack Hibbs realizes he's got to get up there and say, hey, any of you not register to vote before the church's congregation and people raise their hand and then they get a, a, a registration form? Yeah. What he'll do 
in in, uh, in 15 states, ballot harvesting is legal. California is one of them. Uh, it shouldn't be legal, but it is legal. And so where it is, we've got to use it. And what he'll do, he'll get up and say, we're going to have ballot harvesting Sunday. We're going to have you coming in and we'll have a voter guide on how to vote for, not against your values. And, and you can give, fill out the ballot and hand it to one of the pastors and we'll take it to the poll for you. Yeah. So the amount of people he has registered and the amount of people who actually vote because of all that he does is dramatic so that he changed the entire city council the entire school board, the county government, and influences the assembly and the other, other offices. All you need is four or five churches, just four or five uh, churches in, 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 in a city. You'll change that city. You give me 10 or 15 in, in for, a, for like an assembly or state house, you'll change it. You give me 20 churches, I'll change a congressman or congresswoman, we'll, we'll, you, you can defeat a bad one, you can elect a good one, and we'll change things. Yeah. But we've got to exercise our right to vote. Um, and, and, and that's the bottom line. So I'm curious, because I feel like although, yes, we've always had things that go on our, in our world that are not desirable, I yes. feel like over the last handful of years, things have become more chaotic. So I guess the million dollar question is, is will they actually vote this time? And see, I have evidence they don't, um, and 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 that that's very disturbing. So let me let me just give you uh, two important things. One is this: that um, when I take a look at the two thousand twenty election, let me you, you're you're talking about pastors after pastor after pastor not even saying on election day there's an election. Wow. Nonetheless, them saying, you know, hey, two or three weeks, there's an election. Uh, make sure you get your ballot mailed in or make sure you get prepared to go to the poll. Or if you need a car ride or if you need a babysitter or you need some help, we'll be able to do it. Yeah. Um, these type of things can be done at any church. People who have a home Bible study. They can make sure everybody in their home Bible study is aware of what's going on. Uh, uh, there are voter guides that help tell you how to vote for judges, for how to vote for uh, uh, city council, for how to vote for the state offices. So there, there's so much at stake. And, and here's the thing. This election is a tipping point. It's a tipping point on the local level. It's a tipping point on the national level. We're, we're, we are, use the word chaos, we're in the middle of chaos, and, and we've got to stop it. And the best way to stop it is get people who understand right from wrong, yeah. who understand uh, that one plus one is two. People who have a reality-shaped worldview yeah. based on biblical values, and we'll turn everything around, and, uh, and we'll be salt and light. We'll be, the, we'll, we'll, we'll be the people that uh, are as loving our neighbors because we're actually doing something to make positive change. And isn't that, isn't that what the church has always done? Yeah. It was the church in, in, in Roman times where they would throw babies aside that they didn't want. Uh, they gave birth. They didn't want the baby. Maybe it was a girl. They threw it on the road. Christians came along and did something and picked them up and adopted these babies. Christians were the ones that started hospitals and medical care. Uh, and, and Christians here in America, it was uh, Christians with a first great awakening, people down on their knees, arms up to uh, heaven, and this great awakening, a first great awakening, that sparked the American Revolution. The second great awakening was a time when people were moving away from God, ignored God all over the hills of, of America. People were raising their hands, yeah. praising God, asking for forgiveness. And you know what happened? We had an end of slavery, the evil of slavery, because of the second great awakening. And it was the Christians who were the vocal people, the, the, the voices of truth, the voices of liberty, the voices of justice. And that's what we have to be today. And uh, th this is the time. 
And everybody who's listening, they have people they can impact on Instagram, on Facebook, their texts, their phones, their family, their neighbors. They can have copies. They can volunteer to work on a campaign in an election. They can do, you know what the radical left does? They do texting. They have people and they train you how to text. They give you a list of people to text. They'll give you, you can volunteer to phone. You can phone all wherever you want. And in phoning, you can make a difference. Yeah. It's one of the most effective. You could go door to door, take a block, take a take a precinct, go door to door. One last thing I'd say about this is just think of this. In the 2020 election, there were 6.9 million evangelical born-again Christians who did not vote in the swing states. The states how many? How many? Six, uh, it's actually 6,982,400 born again Christians who did not vote in the key swing states. And Arizona, the, 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 uh, the uh, Donald Trump lost Arizona by 10,000 votes. Georgia, he lost it by 11,000. Michigan, by 154,000. Uh, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, uh, he lost it by 81,000. Wisconsin, he lost it by 20,000. These, these states, you just get a small number of people in the churches to vote, it'll completely turn things around. Absolutely. So that's the secret weapon. It's the Christians and, and, the, and the focus is really those, they may have a good heart, they may have good intentions, but they're not registered or they're registered and they don't vote. Wow. So sad. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to further this conversation in just a second. We'll be right back. Great. God is commissioning women leaders to uphold Christian values and change the course of history for his glory and to mobilize other women to blaze the same trail. Want to know what type of kingdom leader you are and learn specific strategies to impact change based on your type? Find out by going to kingdomtrailblazerquiz.com right now. All right, welcome back. So we're talking about the 2024 election and we're talking about the sobering and startling number of Christians that are either not registered to vote or those that are that aren't voting. And if we would, you know, how different things would be. And so is is getting is getting registered to vote and actually going to the polls, is that how we unlock the 2024 election or does it go beyond that? It's how we unlock the 2024 election. But what it does, it leaves the groundwork for changing our culture, for changing our society, for, for stopping the, some of the corruption and some of the insanity that's going on today. And so the, 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 the fact is that um, if Christians would exercise their constitutional God-given right to vote, we see changes here in the local community and in America. And so that, that, that's really why we have to do it. Now, yes, Everybody who's watching this, all the people's friends and neighbors who they know and could send this podcast out to, uh, all these people are going to be important. So is the pastor. Yeah. So many of the people take the cue of the pastor. And if the pastor isn't willing to stand up and speak out and do what is right, then that church probably won't do a thing. Yeah. And so the pastor has to take, uh, you know, stand firm, make a decision to do what is right and speak out and mobilize their church. And then from the standpoint, uh, we, we start off talking about how I've studied what the radical left does. Mm -hmm. I've studied what the Democrats and, and the mobilizers are doing. And, and they're, they're so dedicated to promoting a socialist society that government is their god religion that's politics right they'll do whatever is necessary 
And so that's where they train people. You know what they're doing right now? They are registering people and identifying who's interested in abortion. Who 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 wants to make sure we 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 kill we kill babies really is what it amounts to. They're seeing who likes having their student loans forgiven and right. we're going to vote for us. Who 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 is uh, for different issues? They identify the issues, create a database of those people, so that they can concentrate marketing messages only on them, wow. and then be able to get them out to the poll. Well, the Republicans aren't doing that, but Christians, we can identify other believers and get them out to the poll. So forget the Republican Party. For, for, forget the the, the 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 you know the candidates. We're an army that 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 could create the change if we would simply do what we can do, right. um, uh, and 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 the techniques and strategies they're not difficult. Right. Holding the coffee, inviting people over. Uh, how about this? Get a voter guide, invite people over to your house, and say we're going to go down the ballot. And tell you how to vote for those judges. And we're going to tell you how to vote for these different candidates. And, and bring your ballot and we'll just have a good time. And have a little coffee or have a, a potluck. Have them come over. Fill it out. And those uh, states that's legal to do ballot harvesting, them take it. Uh, you get it and take it to the poll. Those yeah. states that's not, they can fill it out. They can mail it in. Uh, if they want to go to the poll, early voting, they should go early voting to the poll. We can do this. We've got to do this. You know, there's two things that I would add to that. Number one, I think we need to remember that we're electing a president and not a pastor. That's, That's right. right. And number two, I think we need to mature to the point that we don't vote based on emotional decisions. Yes. And, you know, my recommendation to people, and I've said it on this show before, is decide the two or three most important things in your life. And then for once in your life, don't look at what party they align with. Look right. at what it is that they've done in the past and what it is that they say they're going to do. And then pick the party that is most aligned in the areas that are most important to you. For me, in no particular order, I care about my religious freedoms, my yes. money, and yes. national security. Those are yes. the things that are the most important to me. Yeah. And yeah. so now it just happens to be that most of the time that's going to align with the Republican Party. But I'm not just, you know... For those of you who can't see the screen and you're just listening to the audio, I'm Black. And unfortunately, in Black culture, we've been told for years that we're Democrat. We yes. haven't been told why yes. we should be Democrat. Many of us can't voice to you what it is that we think Democrats have really done for you know the Black race. Right. But many of us will just go to the polls and we'll just, any, any Democrat that's on there, and we have no idea until after something happens that we just put somebody in office that is putting policies in place that is against the things that we actually care about. So what matters to you? Find the candidate that aligns with that and forget about the party for a change because we're beyond a point in this country where we can avoid to vote just because we like or dislike someone's personality or because we like or they align with the party that we've always voted for. We just cannot afford and I'm hoping that, you know, it's kind of a du double-edged sword because I hate the things that are happening to children these days. I hate that they're happening, but I'm almost glad that they're happening because many uh, parents are now paying more attention to what is going on around them because it's affecting their children. They were able yes. or more willing right. to turn a blind eye before that. And so we're we're not in a time where we can vote for anything other than the things that matter to you most. And if you're listening to a Godship podcast, I know that biblical values are something that is important to you. And the administration that is in office now, I don't know what else this man can do to show you that he cares nothing about God and what the Bible says. So I will get off my soapbox. So Craig, <laughs> there's a book Wait. over your shoulder called yes. Christian Voter. Tell us a little bit more about that book. Well, yes, it kind of relates to what you were just saying. Uh, God's not a Republican or Democrat. 
and 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 it, it's not about party it's about policy yeah. it's about who is going to protect christians who's going to protect our nation who's going to be able to give us a, an economy that's going to be free from the inflation that every single day the dollar is uh, worth less prices are going up because of overspending by the government you know, we need somebody uh, on policy, somebody to make sure that they stand for Israel. Um, and, and, and so uh, I wrote this book to talk about what I call the non-negotiables. Yeah. Things as Christians, we can't negotiate on. We got to stand firm on. And if, 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 if a candidate can't agree with those, they don't deserve our vote. Right. And then I also wanted to get a book that gave an action plan what can the individual do? What can a home Bible study do? What can a church do to activate people to get out and vote? Mm -hmm. And so I go into that. And I go into the issue of strategically limiting evil. Sometimes there's not a perfect choice. Sometimes there's people that you don't like that are on the ballot, but on policy, they might be better than the other one. And that's where you are strategically limiting evil. Uh, in the in the in the case, uh, if I can, Joe Biden, on the issue of abortion and killing of babies, what he's doing is so damaging to our society of what he's uh, advocating. Uh, Donald Trump wants to protect life. Now, between the two, you could criticize their personality, how they send out tweets you could do whatever you, you know whatever but what's the policy yeah what matters can't, you cannot be silent because i didn't ask you to invite the man over to dinner right. what matters the most <laughs> you know yeah so i i understand this because a, a lot of christians are you know very sensitive about issues like that but we've got we've got to protect the christians right now the Biden administration is attacking Grand Canyon University, trying to put them out of business, one of the nation's leading best Christian colleges. It's being done by an, by a, uh, an executive order within the government. And, and we, I could go on and on for a whole podcast about what's going on out of Washington. We got to stop that. Yes. So my book tells us how to turn things around and it tells you as a Christian, how do you answer the issue, my vote doesn't count, or, you know, Christians should be focusing only on the Bible and only on evangelism, forget politics. Right. And I cover all these different issues uh, from strategically limiting evil to uh, what the issues are. So I, I, it'd be great if people would get the book. I think they'd find it useful. I think they'd want to send it to their pastor. I think they'd want to send it to their youth leader. They'd want to send it to their neighbor and, and their, their crazy uncle. So I would, I would hope so. Well, Craig, yeah. you have a wealth of knowledge. So how can they follow you on social media? What are your so what, what is the social media channel that you're the most active on and what is the, the handle? Uh, they can go to X, but they can also go to Facebook and True Social uh, and and just uh, look for Craig Huey and you've got me and and and, uh, and I'll keep you informed. You'll be able to see articles because we, we come out with content all the time from a Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, it, it, to get the book, all they have to do is order it on Amazon. So they can get the the, uh, the, uh, the Christian voter how to vote for, not against your values on Amazon. Um, or they can uh, go to electionform.org, electionform.org, and that's my website. And electionform.org, they'll see my newsletter and the books. And, uh, and uh, the, if they order it directly from the website, I'd be glad to... Uh, make sure they get the newsletter and sign an autographed copy of the book. Awesome. Well, I'm going to make sure that the links to all of that in the show notes is there. So all that they have to do is click it. Awesome. Everyone, I, I don't know how to say it anymore, that this is one of the top episodes that you need to share. So please share it. Um, Craig, thank you so much for Great. being here and sharing these nuggets. I know this episode is going to be a hit. And you all, I hope that you will consider going back and listening to previous and future episodes as well. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.